I'm going to start with you. Should the Cowboys give Dak a long-term contract? I like how you read all those those uh, those stats well, I have about to. Dak. Somebody all up the, here has yeah. to represent all the, the Dallas Cowboys. All those stats about Dak and where are the Cowboys sitting at right now? No, I addressed that well, as well. Okay, I said they're sitting, seven and they eight. Sitting? They're seven and eight. Yeah. So, <laughs> st so stats don't mean everything. Okay, and that's why I think the Cowboys should franchise tag Zach, uh, Dak Prescott. Here's why. Okay, when you look at Dak Prescott, I always think of the elite quarterbacks, all right? And I'm not talking about just stats, but the elite quarterbacks, the, you know, the Patrick Mahomes, the Russell Wilson. I'm going to use Russell Wilson for an example. Mm -hmm. When you watch Russell Wilson play, okay, can you tell me any of his weapons that are elite or in, that he's surrounded by? No, the, the closest thing would be Tyler Lockett. Because mm -hmm. you know what Russell Wilson does? He elevates guys to, a, to the, another level, okay? That's what Tom Brady has done for years, was just elevate guys who were, people were considered ordinary and elevated them to a whole nother level. Aaron Rodgers has done that for years, just elevate uh, different teammates to a whole different level. Okay, those are what I call franchise-type quarterbacks. Those are the guys that I feel like deserve the, the big money-type quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And what you want to be careful of, you're the Dallas Cowboys, you want to be careful of going the Los Angeles Rams route with Jerry Goff, okay? The, J the Los Angeles Rams paid Jerry Goff a ton of money, yeah. okay? Coming off the Super Bowl, had a good year, paid him a ton of money. And where has that gotten the Los Angeles Rams with Jerry Goff? Because Jerry Goff is not a guy that can elevate or put his team on his back. In the same respect as Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott has gaudy numbers. He has, you know, the, the yardage and the touchdown passes. But the Dallas Cowboys are sitting at 7 and 8, okay, right now. So I would caution the Dallas Cowboys to go the route of paying this huge long-term extension for, the Dak, for Dak Prescott and go the franchise route, franchise tag route. Here's another thing. We know that after this year, more than likely, they're going to be, they're going to have a new coach because Jason Garrett's contract is going to expire, barring them making some miraculous run if they get into the postseason mm -hmm. to get to the Super Bowl. Who knows what the next coach would want if they would want to be saddled with Dak Prescott for the long term. So that's why I think the Dallas Cowboys will be better served using the franchise tag for another year and say, hey, Dak Prescott, look, we got, we signed Zeke long term. We got the line. You know, hopefully we get the defense straightened out. We traded for Amari Cooper. Let's see you put it together for one more year with a, with a new coach, with a new coach rather than us going all in on a guy that maybe the next coach might not want. All right, before, before you comment, I'm going to bring in and welcome to the show ESPN NFL analyst Victor Cruz. And, Victor, I want your take <laughs> on this. Okay, they're ready for you. They're I ready for dancing. you. So I see what's going on. Yeah. Here is the question. Should the Cowboys give Dak a long-term contract? Yes, they absolutely should give him a long-term contract, and here's why. Look, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys and you look at the way that they are constructed, Dak Prescott is the guy that has done what well. I'm not saying he's elite. Woody, I know you made that claim. I'm not saying he's elite. I'm saying he has done enough to warrant a long-term deal. And then sometimes it's not just about you know how you play or I mean obviously it's about how you play and the numbers you put up but sometimes it's just timing sometimes you just hit the market at the right time with other guys that are getting paid with comparable numbers and numbers that are similar to yours or around the numbers that you've been putting up and it's your time to get paid and I think the Dallas Cowboys should just lock him up because it'll give him that security and that safety that that he needs or that he'll feel going into the future, and you might get better play from him. Now, the coaching and, and the play calling, I can't speak for. I think that needs to be resolved. I think, I think the head coach needs to be looked at thoroughly in terms of moving on from him um, because I think he just hasn't gotten enough out of his players. I think he just, you know, it's been mediocre for all the years that Garrett has been there. So I think the, coaches, the coaching staff is something that needs to be dealt with. But when you look at the numbers, 15 game winning drives from Dak Prescott, 19 rushing touchdowns, 13 prime time Sunday night, Monday night, or Thursday night victories. Those are the numbers you look at and you got to say, well, hey, if he's hitting the market at the right time, he has to get a long-term deal done. He should have been got his money. <laughs> <laughs> Pay that man his money. Mm -hmm. He should have got his money at the beginning of the season. We shouldn't even be talking about this right now. Dak Prescott has done things with the Dallas Cowboys that hadn't been done 
in a long time, and that's win games and make the playoffs. Last year, they were one drive away from beating the Rams. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did he have something to do with that? He might Absolutely. have. Okay, well, I'm saying right he now. Might. Absolutely. You're right, right now, it's 7-8. and eight. Okay. A mm-hmm. lot of things has happened with this football team. Mm, they it's, it's, huh? it's not just it's not just Dak Prescott. I mean, they, they're not running the ball a lot. They're not handing the ball off a lot. The defense hadn't played that well against good teams. Okay. But Dak Prescott has been the consistent factor in this whole thing. So, and it go. This goes back to my point. All right. You you guys are ready to pour in in excess of. You know, probably somewhere around $35 million a year. Because that's what it's really going to be in this market now for Dak Prescott. Mm-hmm. For a guy that can't even elevate his own team. They're a team right now that's sitting at 7-8. and eight. We talked about the, the gaudy stats with Dak Prescott. Did you see what happened last week against the Philadelphia oh, Eagles? I'm glad you they brought up last they week. Hold on. They weren't, even feed, they weren't even feeding Zeke Elliott. And we know... That and Zeke that's Elliott the is really Zeke Elliott is really the focal point of the Dallas Cowboys. Let's let's ma- let's make that known. But even the fact that they didn't even feed Zeke, uh, Zeke Elliott and put it on Dak Prescott, he couldn't come through in the clutch. But what if you look at the play. throws? So we talking look about at the paying throws. the dude all this money and he can't even elevate his team the market, when his team need him the most? The market is the market. We can't change yeah. that. The quarterback market is what it is. He's going to be paid at that certain slot. But if you look at the game last week, I understand he had the shoulder. I understand there were some errant throws. I understand that there were some overshots. Mm-hmm. I understand that. But there were six or seven passes that hit receivers right in their hands in timely situations that they didn't catch the football. Those are the time. Those are the moments where your receivers have to come up for you. And in those moments... They didn't show up. Now, I'm not negating the fact that he had some throws that didn't make the cut. But in the last four minutes of the game, he had some throws that his his receivers could have made and could have caught that hit their hands, and they didn't come down with it. And I think that's a deciding point. It's all about situational football. What do you know about that? And they had an opportunity to win the game multiple times mm-hmm. on throws that Dak Prescott made that were on the money that weren't caught by his receivers and that was the tale of the game for me against the Eagles last week. Let me ask you this question, Woody. Okay, you can do all of this. I, you, can do, you can do all that shimmy. In. What, what, what you got? Is Jimmy G going to elevate his team? Or is it the defense and, and everybody else? We're, we're the, excuse me, where are the 49ers right now? They went from 4-12 and 12 last year to possibly having the number one seed but where in the were, NFC. So but, but where are were, we, we going to really talk about this but right where now? where were they? Before Jimmy G got paid, they were terrible. Okay, then they were terrible. Okay, and he got his money with no problems, no fight, no nothing. He got his money Take after just five Prescott games. He got his money, money after just there five is a games. Reason, too. There is a reason that Jerry Jones has not paid Dak Prescott yet. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I know. Because there's I know a re- the reason. There's a there's a reason why Dak Prescott has I paid because he does not believe that Dak Prescott is an elite quarterback. That's why he hasn't gotten paid. That's why I feel like they should go ahead and franchise tag him, bring in a new coaching staff, and run it back, and let's see what Dak Prescott looks like man. in 2020. Give him the security he needs to be successful. Yes. Yes. They've been giving them security. Right. I mean, they, paid the, right. they, they, paid the running, they paid the running back. They traded for, for uh, they traded a first round pick that for security. You paying I mean, everybody around right. me. Right. Right. We one gotta second. Table this. We one second. Well, I just have one question for you. What should they do for Dak? Pay him his That's money. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> okay. Six hundred thirty-five thousand dollars left. I'm gonna start with you. Should the Cowboys give Dak a long-term contract? I like how you read all those those uh, those stats well, I have about to. Dak. Somebody all up the, here has yeah. to represent the, the Dallas Cowboys. All those stats about Dak and where are the Cowboys sitting at right now? No, I addressed that well, as well. Okay, I said they're sitting, seven and they eight. Sitting? They're seven and eight. Yeah. So, <laughs> st- so stats don't mean everything. Okay, and that's why I think the Cowboys should franchise tag Zach, uh, Dak Prescott. Here's why. Okay, when you look at Dak Prescott, I always think of the elite quarterbacks. All right, and I'm not talking about the stats, but the elite quarterbacks. The, you know, the Patrick Mahomes, the Russell Wilson. I'm going to use Russell Wilson for an example. Mm-hmm. When you watch Russell Wilson play, okay, can you tell me any of his weapons that are elite or in, that he's surrounded by? No, the, the closest thing would be Tyler Lockett. Because mm-hmm. you know what Russell Wilson does? 
he elevates guys to a, to the another level. Okay, that's what Tom Brady has done for years was just elevate guys who were people were considered ordinary and elevated them to a whole another level. Aaron Rodgers has done that for years. Just 